Hi, and welcome to the videos for section 1.4 of Math 181. There's actually five videos for this section. I know what you're thinking, oh my goodness, five videos is going to take me forever. Hopefully it doesn't. I've tried to break them into smaller sections so that if there's specific topics that you're having to go back and review, and again, that's ideally uh, the resource that these vo videos can be. If you want to know about a piecewise function, you can go back to the video that was on the piecewise function. In this video, if you want to know the squeeze theorem, you can go back to just that video, watch the piece on the squeeze theorem, rather than having to sit through you know, 30 minutes of video to find the five minute piece that you need. So hopefully uh, this won't, you know, even those five videos, it won't be quite as uh, daunting as it may seem. And again, this is the first video of the five. So in section 1.4, we're going to be talking about calculating limits. So we did some guessing, we did some finding in uh, section 1.3. We're actually going to be now de determining the specific values for, uh, for our functions, for the limits. So if you came from Math 127, what was Math 127 about? Formulas, formulas, and more formulas. In 181, we're at section 1.4, and you haven't had to deal with too many formulas yet. It's, a lot, it's been a lot more conceptual, concepts. Uh, what are we talking about when we deal with limits as we're approaching values? This first video, I'm going to be honest with you, it's all formulas. But it's the math uh, that goes along with uh, you know, functions that you've done in the past. So hopefully it's not, even though it's a bunch of formulas, it should be fairly easy for you to remember. These are our limit laws, which are on page 35 and 36 in the book if you need to go back and reference. First one we have is that the limit as x approaches a of the addition of two functions, f and g, this is the same value as if we find the limit as x approaches a of each individual function and then just add them together. So we, I don't want to say we're distributing because the limit we're finding a value. So just like if you have, uh, I don't know, uh, like sine of x plus 9. You don't distribute the sign. The sign is a function itself, so you can't just distribute it. We're not really distributing the limit here, even though it may seem like it, but it's just a property that we have two functions and we're trying to find the limit of the combination. We can just find each individual limit and then add them together. And that's how most of these are. So the second law, the limit as x approaches a of the difference, f of x minus g of x, so because there's a minus sign, the order is important. We have to say that this is the limit of x, f of x as x approaches a minus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Third law, if we have a scalar, so the limit as x approaches a of some value c times a function f of x, this is the same as multiplying that value c by the limit as x approaches a of f of x. Fourth one, the limit as x approaches a of the product f of x times g of x is the same as the limit as x approaches a of f of x times the limit as x approaches a of g of x. Number five, division. So the limit as x approaches a of f of x divided by g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x over the limit as x approaches a of g of x if, 
So because we have this denominator piece, <clears throat> excuse me. So if the limit as x approaches a of g of x is not equal to zero. So if we would have just divided these functions to begin with, it may have given us a value that as we approached a was okay. But if we break it apart, if the limit of g of x is going to be zero, well then we have a problem. So that's number five. Number six, sorry for kind of scrunching that on. I'm going to try to get all these on one board. So if you got to go back, you can always just go to the end of the video and see all of them at once. But the uh, power, so the limit as x approaches a of f of x to the n power is the same as the limit of the function as x approaches a and then take that all to the n power. And here we're assuming that n is a positive integer. So 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. So the limit as x approaches a of a constant is just that value. So if f of x equals 2, as x is negative 1, it's still 2. As x approaches 10, my value is still 2. It's always that value. So if there's no x to plug in, it's just going to give me that value back, c. The limit as x approaches a of a function just x is equal to just that value a. So if my function is x, as x approaches 1, my answer is 1. If x approaches 8, my answer is 8. So limit as x approaches a of just the function x is equal to this value a that we're approaching. For 9, if I have the limit as x approaches a of x to the n power, this is just equal to a to the n power. My roots, <clears throat> so the limit as x approaches a of the nth root of x is equal to just the nth root of a. So because we have these roots, a couple restrictions first, n is a positive integer, and a is greater than zero if n is even. So if I have the fourth root of x, well I can't have x approaches negative 3, because remember as I mentioned earlier, we're, it has to be in the domain, so because there's nothing in the negative part of the graph, it doesn't really make sense. So a has to be positive, uh, yeah, a has to be positive if n is even. And then lastly, number 11, the limit as x approaches a of the nth root of some other function, f of x, is just equal to the nth root of the limit of that function, f of x, as x approaches a. And same idea as before, n is positive, integer. And now here, the function itself has to be, so f of x, the limit of f of x as x approaches a has to be positive, has to be greater than zero if n is even. So again, you got 11 different formulas, different laws technically. Um, so hopefully you have a little cheat sheet going or a reference sheet. I'd have these on there. Most of them, again, pretty straightforward, um, but maybe some of these guys here, if we start getting into some limits, uh, we'll be able to utilize them. So come on back. Uh, we will look at video two for section 1.4.